Hey guys, Ryan from Vior here, and today we've got two of these new 4090s and an Intel 13900K, and we're going to try to get two gaming computers to run off of one single processor. So let's see if we can do it. We've come a long way since uh, back in the first gen i7 days, which was actually my first real gaming computer that I built. You know, this is based on the uh, I guess i7 950 which was an absolute beast at the time. You know, I remember this processor being almost $1,000 back in 2010. And uh, it was just a four core, eight thread processor. And they used to include these uh, sexy little lunch boxes for you when you bought the processor. But now we've got these absolute monsters in the new 13th gen, the 13900K. So it's kind of weird how Intel set these up, right? Where we've got the eight P cores and then 16 E cores. Well, for gaming, really only concerned with the uh, the eight P cores. Uh, the rest of the the E cores are really for the uh, the higher end uh, workhorse applications like your Blender and such, right? So, um, you know, with that many cores, we really don't need it for gaming. And and today, most games still aren't really well optimized to run a lot of different cores. They, they really run very well on one, two, three, four cores. Uh, past that, there's really not a huge amount of performance gain. Um, in most in most situations. So what we're going to try to do is split that processor up and fit two of these chonky 4090s on here, which uh, you know we're going to probably have to use a PCI bridge because I don't think I'm fitting two of these on here and they'll actually be able to cool themselves, right? This should be pretty awesome and we're going to load a piece of tech on here called Unraid. You know, if you're not familiar with that, it is pretty amazing what you're able to do. So we can actually virtualize the different Windows machines underneath of it. It's, it's like a Linux, really. So you might be wondering why you'd wanna do something like this. So it, it's actually kind of interesting. So say you're in a scenario where you have, uh, you know, it's a husband and wife and they're both gamers, or you have um, uh, roommates and, and they both wanna have a high performance gaming machine, but you don't necessarily have the budget or you might not want to have two crazy high performance computers sitting right next to each other if you happen to game in the same room. So the benefit would be that you only have to buy one case, you only have to buy one motherboard, you only have to buy one processor, um, it's just everything that you would normally do in a computer. You might need a little bit more RAM for this, but we'll get into that later. Um, but other than that, you just need a secondary GPU. And from there, all through the magic of Unraid and Linux, uh, we can um, split everything up, divide it equally between the two different people, uh, and each of them can have a really, really high performance gaming system. So you know, today, gosh, you know, we've got this in the, in the 4090, and people are hitting damn near 500 FPS in Call of Duty. There's no reason to do that. You know, but if you're happy with, you know, I, I guarantee we can probably get you know, over 100 FPS out of this guy at 4K, even with splitting this thing up. All right, let's try doing some benchmarks. I'm thinking we'll run two different types of applications at once. So I'm gonna try to do 3D Mark, like Port Royal over here, and then maybe shadow the benchmark of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the left, and just kind of see how it does with different types of workflows at the same time. All right, so it looks like Port Royal is running. Let's try running the benchmark over here. Holy crap. We're above 200 FPS in Tomb Raider. I'll drop it down a little bit there. That is crazy. See, it's neat. I'm not seeing any hitching going between different scenes or anything like that. It just looks perfect. And Tomb Raider's running at max settings at 2K. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, to be able to see average 170 FPS on Tomb Raider, maximum settings, DLSS quality, um, at 2K, yeah, 170 FPS. And we're CPU bottlenecked, which is to be expected, and we're literally cutting the CPU in half doing what we're doing. Um, but that is pretty phenomenal. I mean, this would be great for a build with a couple of people with a couple of 2K monitors or even some super ultra wide. Um, I mean, most people are only at 140 FPS anyway, or 144 hertz monitors. Uh, this would run that absolutely perfectly. Yeah, at the exact same time of running Tomb Raider, we have 3D Mark run in Port Royal, and we got 21,730 is the score. That is unbelievable. We've got Doom Eternal over here, uh, highest graphic settings at 2K, uh, currently getting around 350 FPS. Um, 
yeah, absolutely buttery smooth. And then we're gonna try to run Cinebench on the other half of the cores at the same time and kind of see what we get. So let's see. Let's see if I can play it while that runs. I'm not seeing any difference in frames. To test in two completely different workloads at the same time. Honestly, that ran way better than I thought it was going to. I mean, we scored 17,048 in Cinebench on half the processing cores, and we were pretty much above 300 FPS on maximum settings in Doom the entire time. Uh, those are two completely different types of workloads. There was no hitching, uh, no problems. I, I didn't see any sort of artifacts or anything like that. Um, and this is the type of thing that I think there could be an actual market for. Um, it's pretty darn interesting. You know, the one thing is without water cooling these graphics cards, I don't see any way of actually getting these to sit on a single motherboard. They're so thick. Um, you know, you'd have a challenge to deal with all the heat that these cards put off without doing a full complete water loop. But, you know, say you could get these into a single chassis. This is, uh, this is pretty amazing. I'm really impressed. I, I went into this not even knowing if this would work. I, I hadn't seen anything about it. You know, it's all very, very new tech, and sometimes new tech in Linux is kind of, it's not really a, a, a thing that usually goes together, but I'm really impressed. This is really cool. All right, uh, we thought we'd go ahead and start firing it up and see if we can actually get two players to play at once. Uh, figured we'll try it on one of the most CPU intensive games out there, Cyberpunk. Since we're splitting these cores, I'm really curious how this is going to handle it with the 4090. So we've got it fired up, one running on each core, or one running on each VM, and we're going to see how it plays. What settings were we on? Uh, I think we did uh, ray tracing medium. So just to kind of keep it the same way across the board, we didn't tweak any settings. This is just the raw performance with the ray tracing medium setting. So cool. Let's get into it. Looks really good. Yeah. Get out of this car really smooth yeah super smooth I'm running mid to high 50s up into mid 60s yeah I think it's really the processor that's bottlenecking us on this game yeah because we're only using like 50 to 60 percent of the GPU so obviously a more GPU dependent game would run much higher frames but this yeah. even this I mean 60 frames for a game like this, you really want to go for resolution anyway mm -hmm. on a cyberpunk game. So. Yeah, you're looking for it to be more pretty than... Right. Yeah. It's not a competitive shooter. You know, we were playing Doom just a minute ago, and we were above 300 FPS while running Cinebench on that end. <laughs> we need some water blocks. Right. EK. <laughs> yeah. EK, hook it up. We need water blocks. <laughs> Stat. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be a fun build, for sure. Stay tuned. They're definitely coming. So yeah, I mean, I'm running mid 60s in the entire time, even during firefights and crowds. And yep, you know, I'm up at 110 so. now, but I'm still stuck in the cutscenes. <laughs> so, Cyberpunk, really CPU intensive uh, game, handling it uh, to me super acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really a pretty awesome concept if you think about it. Especially if you have a, a gaming family. Yeah, you absolutely. You don't have two complete dedicated rigs. Yeah, you got more than one person in the house that wants the, a super high performance computer. And the thing I didn't mention is that you don't you don't have to have matching GPUs to do this. Like we could do this with a 4090 and a 3070. It, you can do it with one AMD GPU and one NVIDIA GPU. We don't have to have matching hardware to make this work. It, that's what's so cool about Unraid is we literally take the raw device and we can just pass it through to a virtual machine. Well, so if you got a if you're a dad out there and have two kiddos and <laughs> yeah. both of them want a PC and you already have one, just add a GPU, split the cores and off to the races. That actually the most that I've done on Unraid is uh, I've done 3 3080s before on a Threadripper processor before. So I passed six cores to each of those and we were able to play uh, three different games all at one single time. It was really really cool. Yeah, I'm uh, 170 172, I'm in a firefight, still hitting 180. Yeah. I died because I'm looking at the frame counter. <laughs> yeah, I'm still hitting 180. I mean, just fine. Max settings looks beautiful. Yep. The shadows are, you know, awesome, of course. Fire texture, shadows in the fire. I mean, yeah, everything's looking good. So, GPU's sitting at 42%, or, uh, 42C, yeah. Yeah, nice and cool. 80, 75% usage on them. Mm -hmm. 
So plenty to go still. You know, I do think there's a little bit of optimization we could do, like lowering some CPU settings, because really I'm only using 80% of the GPU. So I just wonder if we tweak with it a little bit, we could probably get a high on frame rate out of this. Oh, so, sure. Right? Yeah. Sweet. So comment down below. He mentioned you can do multiple GPUs, different GPUs. Comment down below if there's maybe a setup that you're wanting to test at home or, or add a GPU to your 13900 rig mm -hmm. um, and split it. Um, and you just want to be curious about the performance. Comment down below. Maybe we'll add a 3070 and a 4090 or, <laughs> yeah. or what have you and yeah. see what the, the settings are like. So. Or if there's any games we forgot. Even want to or see if there's any games. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what the 7950 does and how it compares. I guess that's it. Yeah. So. so on to the uh, part two, 7950, stay tuned for that. If you're an AMD fan, we'll see how it stacks up against the new 13900K. <laughs> That'll be awesome. That'll be really cool. See you next time.